citizen science seeking amateur stargazers for cluster research. This is not the first time that amateur astronomers have been uh, called in to uh, volunteer their services because they're watching the skies mostly every night anyway. And uh, even NASA has, has asked for them to help, especially for locating asteroids and comets. So a U.S. project uses photographs to assist astronomers identifying structures in three nearby galaxies. This is on Cosmos Magazine. This new project wants citizen scientists to assist in discovering previously unseen star clusters and perhaps even unlock secrets of the history of our universe, or what's out there anyway. So this project is in collaboration with the U.S. National Science Foundation, the NSF, and also the Northwestern University, which is in Illinois, and it's, calling, uh, it's called the Local Group Cluster Search. Their goal is to combine high-quality images of three irregular nearby galaxies. These galaxies are the Triangulum, Triangulum, the Large and the Small Magellanic Clouds. What we see here is a picture of the sky over Namibia in Africa, and it's a small Magellanic cloud. This is one of the three locations, one of the three galaxies of our, our skies that they will be studying closely. And this is with the uh, detective skills of amateur astronomers. And you know, uh, one of my friends, her son, has this hobby. I guess he started from when he was a very small boy, uh, you know, we figure out what are we going to get our boys for Christmas or something, for their birthdays. We get them a little medical kit or a little chemistry set or, you know, a little telescope. Well, that's how he started. And he started getting bigger and more expensive telescopes. And uh, he joined an amateur astronomers club. And they take pictures of what they see. And uh, they have competitions with each other. And it's also a local thing, it's an, a, a national thing, and it's an international thing. And uh, they get prizes for finding things between themselves anyway. So they're out there doing, I guess, I don't know, they have machines that take pictures of the sky and then they review the, the pictures when there's some kind of motion. So they have computers that do that very nicely as well. So together with um, the Milky Way and the Andromeda, galaxy Andromeda, the three galaxies here, the triangulum, the large and small Magellanic clouds, form what is known as the local group and identifying the star clusters in them will aid astronomers in their job to understand uh, the stages of stellar evolution. I get okay, they want to see what's happening in the sky. The thing is to see what's moving there, uh, to see if there's uh, any supernova close to us, which would be detrimental to us, obviously, to see if there's any inbound planet system, to see if there's any inbound comet or asteroid or any near-Earth potentially hazardous object. <laughs> you know? Because there's a lot of stuff there that we don't even see. NASA and, and the other space agencies do not catch. Let's remember the meteorite that, uh, that struck over Russia in Chelyabinsk was never seen. A lot of these asteroids coming near or near Earth objects that come to us are seen about an hour before. I mean, that's unacceptable to me. There's also every spring you have, the, you have NASA people, you have um, British um, astronomy uh, uh, um, uh, uh, um, Oh my God, forget it, scientist. All right, you have British scientists coming out saying that it's just a matter of time before we get struck by an asteroid because the Earth has been struck by asteroids and even comets many times. If you look at Google Earth, please go and look be be between north, uh, the north of Latin America 
and the south has happened to Latin America. You'll see in the same directions on Google Earth, the crust of the Earth is as if the finger of God has gone and pushed the, the, the uh, mantle, the surface of the Earth with his finger uh, from the Pacific Ocean towards the Atlantic, just south of, um, just in the, into the area of Cuba. The same thing happens with the finger imprint of the finger of God pushing the mantle between the tip of South America and Antarctica. It's as if that finger of God has broken that joining line, has even indented those land, land, land areas uh, to, from the Pacific towards uh, where it was a straight line towards the Atlantic. And there's a smaller line like that, again in the same direction, around the area of Indonesia, just uh, you know, south of the of Indonesia, above uh, above. Uh, let me see my Google map. Above Australia. Anyway, you'll see it. So those were comets. Those were much larger. They must have been comets that hit Earth. And you also you have about fifty uh, asteroid impact areas that have hit Australia. And you have I don't know how many you have in Canada and the United States. There's a big one. Just outside, if you go again to Google Map, go to uh, the area of Quebec. And even when you go zooming into it, you'll see a huge, round, perfect circular thing with a green land area in it. I mean, that can only be an impact crater. Um, and for me, I have not gone into it, but I believe Hudson Bay and James Bay are also impact craters. Uh, they're, they're too perfectly circular not to be. Um, Anyway, all right, it's nice for astronomers to say we want to know how uh, uh, our uh, galaxies evolved. Okay, that's so beautiful to say things like we want to understand the universe. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, everybody wants to understand the universe and how space evolved. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, the thing is, <laughs> you want to see, you want as many volunteers as you can get who are there looking at the skies anyway, to take these pictures and study them to see if they can find anything. You want more eyes on the uh, film that you have because you don't have enough people. It costs too much. Um, and the the algorithmic, the, the AI doesn't know how to do it, I guess, as, as well as humanized can. Now it says the algorithmic cluster searches have trouble you see here what it says, they have trouble eliminating false detections due to chance grouping of stars. While the human classified catalogs provide a reliable sample of clusters down to very faint brightness levels. This is what was said by the project leader Cliff Johnson. So the local group cluster search uses the images from the 2017 pro project called Survey of the Magellanic Stellar History or SMASH for short. So if anybody uh, wants to be involved in this, that's just great. I think that would be, you'll, you'll only benefit by this. I'm sure that you'll find something. Um, anyway, this is on citizen science. And from what I understand, it says here how citizen scientists discovered a giant cluster of galaxies. So uh, they're calling citizens to help, and also it says here that citizens discovered a giant cluster of galaxies. It used to be that you had to have years of training before you could take part in cutting-edge science, but that has changed, they said. Uh, with the power of the Internet, enabling thousands, thousands of ordinary people to uh, contribute to one of humanity's most exciting endeavors from the comfort of their homes. You know, at your at your pace, uh, whenever you want to, and it's a beautiful hobby. Obviously, it's fascinating to keep looking at the stars and the sky. So, citizen science first became prominent, they say, in two thousand six, launching Stardust at Home by the University of California at Berkeley, and it followed by two thousand seven Galaxy Zoo, aiming at classifying galaxies from optical images, and. Many such scientists, citizen scientist projects span all fields of science, not only astronomy, but it goes into biology as well. It's a simple idea 
the average human brain is far superior to our most powerful computers when it comes to problems like image recognition. So these science projects combine brain power of thousands of ordinary people volunteering to solve some of science's most challenging problems. One of them is the EMU project, the Evolutionary Map of the Universe, will uh, survey, the, as they say, the radio sky using CSIRO's new $165 million ASCAP telescope being built in Western Australia to understand how galaxies form and evolve. But they have a problem. To get the best science, they said, we need to cross-match these radio sources with galaxies spotted by infrared and optical telescope, and no research team has enough members to match 70 million objects by eye. You see? So about half of the EMU's radio sources are galaxies like our own Milky Way, with radio emissions resulting from debris of star formations, and their radio source is easily matched to the optical galaxy. The other half are caused by jets of electronics squirting out from massive black holes at the center of the galaxy, producing two giant blobs of radio emission on either side of the galaxy. EMU will see, you see them as three blobs in a line, but how can you distinguish one of these three triple monsters from a line of three? It's hard. But these are the uh, neural networks um, in their, still in their infancy. Uh, so in 2010, he says, I visited Chris Lawton, Linton, University of Oxford. Chris was one of the founders of Galaxy Zoo. And uh, they wanted to do that in order to get uh, scientists, they, had, they did get young scientists uh, uh, at the University of Western Australia, uh, taking over responsibility for leading it, designing interface, trying to prototype, launch, uh, they launched a December 2013 enormous success, 10,000 people matched up sources, resulting in some 1.6 million cross matches. So uh, there you go. These rare objects, they say, caused by electron jets ejected from massive black holes. In these cases, they are blown sideways by their flight through intergalactic gas, making them bend into a C-shape. So uh, the uh, discovery, they say, was detailed in a paper published in monthly notices at the Royal Astronomic uh, Society. Clusters are poorly understood, but they're key to understanding how our universe is put together. So, there you go. They've already found things, you see. Amazing. I'll leave links below for you for this on uh, Cosmos Magazine. How citizens uh, can help discover things out in the universe that um, computers can't match. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you. Thank you.